Hey everyone, welcome. It is October 5th, 2024. Um, welcome to the Evanston Happy Hackers. Um, this is like a hacking, a collaborative hacking lab that I run um, every every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'm only doing one hour today because I'm, I'm moving and there's a lot of other stuff going on in my life. But welcome. Um, yeah. So, nobody's currently with me, it's just me, but I wanted to go over a box that I was working on yesterday and just talk about it a little bit. Um, I'm not going to cover how to get set up with Hack the Box, that's something I think you should do on your own, um, but I'll, I guess I'll give you a big, a quick, like, rundown on it. Um, basically, when you set up, you have to get a, get Parrot OS or Kali. Um, download a VPN file from Hack the Box. So you download the file and then um, once you have the file which is saved in downloads slash lab henry fbp dot ovpn you run sudo open vpn and then the ovpn file um, and that starts a VPN connection and if I run IPA I can see that there's a new device it's a new network adapter called ton zero and this is the VPN um, connection so like my IP address on that network is is this that's like the attacker on the victims network and you'll use this IP to um, if you want to force the victim to connect to you you would use this this IP address 10101461 and once you have that set up um, you got the IP address of the victim from Hack the Box, and then I usually like to run an nmap scan. And I, I just you can just run um, nmap and then the the IP address. Nmap is a tool that scans all of the ports of the machine. Um, after that, some of the boxes will give you a host as part of the nmap scan. Um, and you should edit a file called slash etc slash hosts and I'm using nano to do that so I, I did that by just typing sudo nano etc slash hosts and then I went to the bottom of the file and I added the IP address of the host and then the host name so that if if I do ping jewel.htb, uh, it, it resolves to the IP address. And it, it might also be necessary to do, um, it also might be necessary to set up the host file to be able to connect to the website. Like, um, So if, um, if I wanted, it looks like this host is running two HTTP servers, one on port 8000 and one on port 8080. So if I wanted to connect to the one on port 8000, I could just go to jewel.htb colon 8000. So I'll give you, a, I guess, an overview of like what I, what I did. Um, and I was using a guide to help me out because I got stuck. But I went to port 8000 and I noticed that there is a git repository. I was also using, I was actually also using chat GPT to help me, which was pretty cool. Um, it had some interesting, interesting suggestions for me. Um, So a whole bunch of stuff I was doing. So I, I basically went I went to this Git server on the victim, and I saw that there is a Git repo, and there's a bunch of 
um, I went, I clicked on tree after I clicked on this summary. And then I realized that I could look at the, the, this is the source code for a Ruby application. And, um, you know, you can like, the gem file is a file that specifies versions within Ruby that Ruby package manager downloads. So I was like, okay, if, if I can download all of this, I can just look through the source code for the website. And if there's a vulnerability in the way that the source code is written, then I could potentially exploit that vulnerability to get my objective, which is in hack the box, it's just to get like a user flag, um, which is a little text file that gets stored in, on the server's hard drive. So you're meant to, to steal that. Um, and I was thinking to myself, uh, I asked ChatGPT, I was like, how can I download this from GitWeb? And it said, well, you could scrape it manually, you could download all of them individually, and I was like, those are terrible solutions, there's got to be an easier way. And then I realized that I could click on commit diff, wait, no, yeah. And then I realized that I could click on patch, and a, a git patch is a file that has a bunch of different um, git is a thing that lets you version software, and a git patch is a single file that has a lot of different um, files embedded within it. So it represents a large amount of changes to a um, source code repository. So it has all the files that I want. So what I did was I downloaded this big file that has all it has all of the all of the files and embedded into a single file. It's kind of like a zip file, except it's not compressed. Um, and I just hit Control S on my browser, and then I saved it. Uh, I saved it to like a random folder. And then I went to Jewel Git. And then I just ran Virtual get to virtual dot get to I ran git init and then I ran git apply dash f jewel wait git did I run that? Okay, git how to apply patch. I forget what command I ran. Git apply Yeah, I did. I ran git apply and then the name of the patch file. Um, yeah. And then I had all the source code, um, so that was pretty cool. So what I did next was I, I went through all of the source code in the app. I went through every single like file, and I was just looking at... I ignored all the JavaScript because I figured it wasn't... So what I did was I, I asked ChatGPT for... Um, what did I ask it? hack the box boxes that I could play on that have me writing exploit code and it recommended Jewel and it said there's a buffer overflow exploit. That's right. That's the that's what I remember. Um, well, that's what I did. So I was looking through all the Ruby code. I knew that if it was a if it was a exploit code, if it's running Ruby, JavaScript is server side, so I just ignored all the JS because it didn't it wasn't running on the server. JavaScript runs in the browser. Um, so I just went through every Ruby Ruby file, and I was like, where's the vulnerability? Um, I didn't see any serialization or, like, command execution at all. This was all just, like, save stuff to the database, basically. Like, all these, these um, article, uh, this is a class. I think it's called, there's a thing in programming called object relational mapping, where you just have an object and it can like save stuff to the database. So I, this is not, this doesn't execute commands, it just saves stuff to like a SQL server. 
So there's nothing really, I didn't find anything here. And then I kind of got stuck. And I think I looked at the guide for it and it mentioned that there's actually a vulnerable dependency um, in the gem file that we're meant to write an exploit for. And it said that Rails had a vulnerability. Um, so, just going through my history. Yeah, here's me asking it about the Git web directory, and it says you can clone the repo, which didn't work. You could scrape it, which is a terrible suggestion. Um, it actually didn't say that you should download a patch file, which I think is kind of indicative of how AI can be like wrong about stuff sometimes, um, or it just doesn't. Yeah, and then I said, I downloaded the patch. How can I apply it? Um, and it said git apply patch, and then I did that and it worked. And then I, I asked it how to view vulnerable dependencies. It said I should use bundler audit, which I used it and it didn't identify the vulnerability. It was just wrong about it. Um, so what I instead of using bundler, what was it? Bundler audit, which didn't work, I then asked chat GPT what dependency in this gem file has multiple deserialization vulnerabilities from 2020? And I just pasted the the uh, dependency file into the chat GPT chat, and then it said, "Oh, it's it has it's Rails. Rails is the one with deserialization vulnerabilities." Um, and I ended up. I think I, I think, w which one did I, oh yeah, and then I also found bcrypt hashes, um, I found a hash and I, I wanted to know if it was bcrypt, and it said yeah it is, which the bcrypt hashes were like in an SQL file, which I didn't get to cracking them, but I might do that later. So then I settled on using, uh, I think I asked ChatGPT which one is easiest to exploit. Yeah, which is the easiest RCE, um, which is this. So what I did was I searched the CVE name and then POC on Google, and I just clicked on the first GitHub link, um, and I found some Python code that is kind of laggy. I'm not on my regular laptop because I'm moving right now. So please bear with me. I might have to stare at this screen for like 30 seconds or a minute. There we go. Okay, uh, I found this Python code that some random person wrote, um, and it's just a piece of code that sends a post request to a specific endpoint with a payload that is a serialized Ruby object that the vulnerable component within Rails will accept and then deserialize and then execute the code within it. Um, and I took this code and I downloaded it to my git repo and it um, it accepts the host and port the username of somebody who exists because you need to log in to exploit this vulnerability the password of the user and then the command um, and it takes this command and it puts it into it 
this variable called CMD and then it puts it into this payload which looks really ugly and the reason that this looks so weird is that in Python these are escape sequences for hexadecimal numbers so like in, pro in most programming languages um, text is stored in something called a string and all of these are just like numbers like these are um, most ASCII characters are just numbers but these are not printable um, these are probably numbers that mean something special when you are deserializing a Ruby object so I don't I don't know if, if you wanted to know more you could probably ask chat GPT or like look at the specification for Ruby serialization but I didn't care I just wanted I saw code that looked like it worked and I just ran it um, the sad part was I, and I wrote this little shell script to to make the process a little bit easier but I I was able to get this command on line 18 to work sorry not not that one I was able to get this command on line 13 to work and this would send this uh, it sends it to I think slash users slash user ID and then the data it's actually funny this is in the uh, the payload is in the username field so the <laughs> <laughs> the username is this big Ruby object that gets deserialized. It's pretty funny. Um, so I was able to get the server to sleep for 10 seconds, which was awesome. The victim could execute, I could cause the victim to execute a sleep command. And I was really excited when that, when that worked. Um, I was, I was like super, I was stoked. Because um, I was like, oh, I'm basically, I'm almost done. I have to almost have the user flag. Um, and then I, what I did was I wanted to run a reverse shell. And a reverse shell is where you force somebody to connect to your computer. A victim, you make a victim connect to your computer. So I set up a... Um, there's this tool called netcat and you can run it with the nc command um, and I don't remember what these flags are I, I think v is verbose l means listen and p means port I think and the port is 1234 and also I haven't explained this but a port is just a number it's like a door that you can send data through on a computer and they just use numbers to identify which one so um, there's like a bunch there's a every computer has like a really large number of ports so it can send a lot of different types of data um, anyway I, I, I on the attacker machine I, I started listening accepting data on port 1234 and I was trying to execute this command on line 23 on the victim which causes them to connect to the attacker and then start accepting data from the attacker and then the victim will take the data that the attacker gives them and execute it as code and the reason this is so useful is I can just type a thing in my terminal and it will execute on the victim so that I don't have to keep changing the things in this quote in these quotes I can just go back to my reverse shell using netcat and I can just start typing ASDF or whatever I can start typing in here and whatever I type in here will be sent to the victim and the victim will execute it so reverse shells are really useful um, they're very very useful but I was never able to get this to work and it made me really sad. I could only get line 13 to work. I could only sleep for 10 seconds. And then I got, I had to leave and then I, 
I have a lot of moving to do and stuff. So that's kind of where I got, how far I got. It was really fun and really interesting. Um, I found a guide. I found a guide. This website, 0xdf.gitlab.io, where they, um, I used it to help me out. Um, and they they mention a different proof of concept for this deserialization vulnerability. Uh, they mentioned they made a VM with a specific version of Ruby, and they wanted to open the Rails console to dynamically create a serialized payload with a command inside of it. Um, and they, so they set up their environment, they run bundle exec rails console, which puts you into a Ruby REPL. Uh, a REPL is, it means read, eval, print, loop. And a REPL is a way to um, execute Ruby code. So if you want to make a variable like what they're doing, you can just do that in Ruby. And he's this person, uh, they're, ma they're setting up an object and setting attributes on the object so that later they can use this function called marshall.dump, which is the serialization function, to create this ugly big string that has a bunch of like special characters in it that contains the payload and all of the other serialized fields um, that then get deserialized on the victim. I was never able to set up my Ruby environment correctly. That's what I got kind of got stuck on. But that's basically it. I guess because I'm super busy today, I think I'm going to end it here. But it was really fun doing this lab. I think you have to pay for this to be able to access this lab. It's like $14 a month. I think it's worth it if you, if you like hacking. Um, if you want to learn more about hacking, give it a shot. Just if you're really new, I would recommend starting on the easy boxes or find a guide that someone else has written like this and just follow it. Just do all of it yourself. You're probably going to get, you might get stuck like me. Things might not work. Um, it might be really difficult, but don't let that discourage you. Um, I learned most about, I learned about all of the cybersecurity things that I know just by doing stuff. You know, don't give up. Don't give up just because you run into something that doesn't work or you're confused or you're stuck. Go ask ask ChatGPT, ask Reddit, um, ask on Stack Overflow. You know, don't ever don't ever let something stop you from achieving your dreams. Um, anyway, this was kind of fun, giving you like a recap on what I did, and I hope that you have fun hacking. And if you want. To uh, I'm gonna put an invite to the hack ha Evanson Happy Hackers um, group in the YouTube video. So go check it out if you want to join. I'm I'm gonna try to do this every week on Saturday early in the morning in Central Time. Um, uh, whoever you are, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.